the previous fourth generation Nissan Serena C26 was plagued with reliability issues from a bad CVT gearbox to issues to do with the bushes and even the hybrid problems to the point that if you inquired about buying or purchasing a Nissan Serena, you will be told to either invest that money elsewhere or maybe buy any other minivan probably a uh, Toyota Voxy or Noah, a uh, Mazda Biante or Honda Stepwagon. But now there's this newer generation of the Nissan Serena, the C27, which is the fifth generation. It was in production from 2016 till 2022. And straight away, I can tell you that it's better in almost every aspect, be it aesthetically, efficiency-wise, and even the CVT transmission has been improved but the record of unreliability of the c26 may still haunt this newer c27 serena because there's still this mentality that the serena is generally unreliable but the question is this is the c27 a minivan that you should now seriously start considering Let's find out in today's episode. We are going to put it head to head against the Mitsubishi Delica D5, the Honda Stepwagon, and last but not least, the dominant Toyota Voxy. So please stay tuned for that. And as always, if you find this content helpful, please do consider subscribing to the channel for more informative content on cars as well as bikes and welcome to iCave Auto Reviews. So we are going to be comparing the 2018 models. The 2018 Serena, as I've just said, is the fifth generation, which was in production from 2016 till 2022. The 2018 Delica D5 is also the fifth generation, which was in production from 2007 till present. That is quite a long production time, though it was first lifted in 2019 to freshen it up. The 2018 Voxy is the third generation. It was in production from 2014 till 2021, but again it was first lifted in 2017, especially at the front, and I reckon it looks more aggressive as we will see later. Lastly, the 2018 Honda Stepwagon is the fifth generation, which was in production from 2015 till 2022. A facelift was also done in 2017. So now we will begin with the engine options. The Nissan Serena comes with two, a 2000cc mild hybrid coded MR20D. It's mild in the sense that it has an eco motor which acts as a slightly more powerful alternator that recuperates energy when the vehicle is coasting so as to reduce fuel consumption. That eco motor also doubles up as a starter motor in the sense that it gives some torque assistance to the crankshaft, specifically around 48 newton meters. So it's a very mild hybrid setup and in fact it doesn't even have an EV mode. So you can't drive this vehicle on electric mode. It's a simple setup that is devoid of the complications that other hybrids have and generally it's very reliable this particular engine comes paired to a cvt gearbox that has been improved it's smoother and more refined now reliability wise it has also been improved there aren't too many cases of cvt failure like in the previous generation Yes, they are still there, but not as rampant as in the previous generation. Just a few days ago, I was with a client who has been using this Nissan Serena as a business van. He has even done a few long journeys and has not experienced any issues at all with the gearbox. He went that extra step and installed the CVT oil cooler just as a precautionary measure. And so far, the vehicle is performing quite well. So I would advise you do the same. Even though this CVT has been improved, just go the extra mile and install that CVT oil cooler. The engine in itself is reliable 
and even the mild hybrid system is not likely to fail so install the cvt oil cooler and you should have a relatively stress-free ownership experience the other engine option is the 1200cc three-cylinder e-power coded as the hr12 de we've talked about this engine in the recent past it's a series hybrid that has also been used in the nissan note that engine does not drive the wheels instead the engine acts as a generator which powers the batteries then the batteries power the electric motor which then drives the wheels Power is sent to the wheels via a single speed planetary gear. The advantage of this system is that there is almost instant torque delivery, so the vehicle feels quite fast off the line. In terms of reliability, this system has been very good. In the Nissan Note, we've not necessarily heard of any issues, and even internationally, the Nissan Serena e-power has been performing very well in fact in japan it's really selling well and doing better than the likes of the toyota noah and toyota voxy hybrids which have been leading the sales chart for quite a long time so that tells you nissan has really done a good job and almost outsmarted the segment leaders something to take note of is that just like in other conventional hybrids, this e-power will require battery replacement at some point in its life. Probably after around 10 to maybe 15 years depending on the mileage. And that's why for these hybrids, it's always important to buy one with low mileage. If possible, even with below around 50,000 kilometers on the clock so that you can fully be able to maximize on the hybrid batteries. The 2 liter mild hybrid can return figures of around 15 kilometers per liter depending on how you drive and also on how much weight the vehicle is carrying. For example, if you are in traffic and you are hauling around 6 to 7 passengers and a bit of cargo, that consumption will definitely drop probably to around 12 kilometers per liter or even lower. The 1.2 liter e power is even better in that regard. You can expect between 17 to around 22 kilometers per liter, which is very good considering this is a minivan. Let's now move on to the Mitsubishi Delica D5. This is another underrated minivan in the Kenyan market, yet it has quite a lot of goodies to offer. You can get this minivan with four engine op options. The first two are 2000 cc's, one being the 4B11 and the other being the 4J11. Now, the 4J11 is just an improved version of the 4B11. It's more economical and refined. The third option is the 2400cc. Then lastly, there's a 2260cc, commonly referred to as a 2200cc turbo diesel. Mostly, the petrol options come paired to a CVT gearbox, while the diesel can come paired to either a 6-speed torque converter automatic or if you get the more recent models you can even get an 8 speed automatic this is in fact the only minivan here in this comparison that has the option of a proper automatic gearbox the 2000 cc's are not very ideal for this minivan and why do i say so you may think they are more economical but they're actually not if you put seven passengers and some cargo in this minivan, it will consume way more than the 2200cc turbo diesel, yet those engines will still struggle quite a bit. The 2400cc petrol feels a bit more powerful, but it's worse in terms of consumption. Yes, it's very reliable, just like the 2.0 liters, but they will dent your pocket when it comes to efficiency. That leaves us with only one option, which is the diesel. This engine is apparently the best bet. It's powerful enough and ideal for long distances, yet it's the most efficient. The only thing I would advise you do is that you delete the DPF, that is the diesel particulate filter, to prevent any future issues that may crop up. Then something else is that this being a turbocharged diesel engine, 
you have to be very careful with its maintenance it's a reliable diesel engine but if you skimp on its maintenance the first thing that will die is that turbo so be watchful and make sure the maintenance is done at the correct required interval this minivan also has the best four-wheel drive system some variants are only available as front-wheel drives while others have the option of selecting either two-wheel drive four-wheel drive or auto so in auto once the system detects a bit of slip it will lock up the rear differential so that coupled with the excellent ground clearance that this minivan has seriously gives it an edge over all its competitors it's in fact the only minivan that can enable you to do some off-roading without any modifications as for efficiency the 2.0 liter can return around 12 kilometers per liter the 2.4 around 10 kilometers per liter and the diesel between 13 to about 15 kilometers per liter very impressive as it strikes a good balance between power and efficiency on to the dominant toyota voxy which is the noah's twin you can get this vehicle with just two engine options a 2000cc 3zr engine or an 1800cc hybrid again it's available in either front or all-wheel drive then transmission wise there's either a cvt or an ecvt which is exclusive to the hybrid variant these engines are pretty reliable and no wonder these Noahs and Voxes have really dominated the market. They are simple engines, especially the 2000cc, very easy and affordable to maintain. The 1.8 litre hybrid is also quite good, though there have been a few cases to do with hybrid faults and even failure to the point that some people, some clients, have been forced to just install the 2000cc 3ZR engine and the CVT transmission but generally for the most part they are quite reliable though I have to say that in terms of hybrid technology Honda may have a slight edge of a Toyota Honda hybrids are really doing well very few issues if any even in the first place the 2.0 liter in the Voxy can return figures of around 14 kilometers per liter, while the 1.8 liter hybrid up to around 23 kilometers per liter, which is seriously efficient. Last but not least, let's also talk about the Honda Stepwagon. It has only two options, just like the Voxy, a 1.5 liter turbo or a 2000cc hybrid, which has two electric motors. This minivan is also available in either front or all-wheel drive. Power is transmitted to the wheels via CVT gearbox in both engines. The 1.5 liter turbocharged engine has been used in several other Hondas, from the Honda Civic to even the Honda CRV, and it has proven to be a reliable engine. You may think 1.5 liter is too small for this big minivan, but you may be surprised to know that it produces almost similar power to a 2000cc Toyota Voxy or Noah, so it's decently powerful. The hybrid option, on the other hand, is as good as it gets, very reliable and just as efficient as a Toyota Voxy hybrid. In fact, I can comfortably say that in terms of hybrids, this Honda Stepwagon is slightly better than a Toyota Noah or Voxy. As for consumption, the 1.5 liter turbo can get around 15 kilometers per liter, while the hybrid between 16 to around 22 kilometers per liter, though the claimed figure is up to around 25 kilometers per liter. The Nissan Serena has a 60 liter fuel tank capacity, but e power variants have 55 liter tanks. The Delica has a 66 liter tank, the Voxy a 60 liter tank, though the hybrid variants get a 55 liter tank. Lastly, the Stepwagon has a 52-liter tank. In terms of ground clearance, the best in class is the Mitsubishi Delica D5, measuring in at an impressive 210 millimeters. You don't need any modifications to drive this minivan. Those big bumps or bad roads will not hinder or give you any challenge when driving this minivan. That said, the worst van here in terms of the clearance is the Honda Stepwagon. It measures between 140 to 150 millimeters. Now, with this, with this one, you may be forced to do a bit of modifications or better still, just install some slightly larger wheels. 
instead of modifying the suspension this minivan will seriously struggle once you put in six or seven people plus some luggage so some modification is almost inevitable lastly the voxy and serena both measure in at 160 millimeters which is still low when not loaded they are not too bad but once loaded you will struggle so again some modification may be necessary all these minivans get mcpherson struts at the front then at the back they get torsion bars with the exception of the mitsubishi delica which gets a multi-link setup which is good for both comfort and a bit of off-roading that said i must point out that the most comfortable minivan here is the nissan serena the tuning of that suspension coupled with the zero gravity seats just give it an edge over its competitors it really does provide a very comfortable ride stopping power in all these vehicles is made possible by ventilated discs at the front and solid discs at the back though some lower variants of the toyota voxy and noah can still come with drums at the back the serena weighs in at around 1710 kgs the delica between 1680 to 1980 with the all-wheel drive variants being the heaviest the Vox between 1560 to 1730 and lastly the step wagon between 1630 to 1770 kgs let's now delve into safety the basic features you can expect to get in all these minivans include abs ebd stability control traction control hill hold assist automatic door locks safety belt pretensioners, collision mitigation, lane keeping assist, driver, passenger, and side curtain airbags. Then as for the optional features, depending on the trim level, you can get blind spot detection, 360 degrees parking camera, intelligent park assist technology, roadside road sign recognition and automatic high beams so generally vehicles have really become safe especially with the incorporation of these active driver assist safety features that said i want to point out that the nissan serena is best in class it offers a technology by the name pro pilot which offers autonomous driving technology which assists with the acceleration the steering and also braking it's almost like as if you are being driven by a computer on wheels it's very intelligent though i would not advise anyone to rely 100 percent on it i think it would really be ideal and very helpful in a situation whereby the driver is so much fatigued and unknowingly falls asleep while driving or even in a situation whereby uh, the driver has some health complications and passes out while driving so this is te a technology that can save lives so thumbs up for nissan now as for the extra or optional features you can get in these minivans depending on the trim level you can expect to get dual power sliding rear doors twin sunroofs or triple sunroofs like in the mitsubishi delica d5 there's also a uh, rear entertainment screens leatherette interiors daytime running lights alloy wheels fog lights navigation 360 degrees parking camera paddle shifts heated seats and body kits so generally not bad in fact there are some very interesting variants of these minivans like in the mitsubishi delica there is a roadest package that adds sportier bumpers alloys and even an electronic tailgate then in the voxy there is a zs gr package that is very aggressive and looks quite sporty and even has a sports tuned suspension most importantly how much will each of these minivans set you back at for a 2018 nissan serena expect to part with anywhere between 1.8 to around 2.4 million shillings for a 2016 to 2018 mitsubishi delica expect to pay anywhere between 2.3 to around 3 million shillings depending on the trim level and model year then a 2018 voxy is going for roughly around 2.3 to 2.95 million shillings and lastly a 2017 and 2018 models of the step wagon are going for roughly around 2.1 to around 2.85 million though 2018 high spec models 
can even top out at around 3 million shillings. Before we discuss value for money, I want to point out a few things regarding the space packaging of these minivans. Let me start with the most spacious and practical vehicle, which is the Honda Stepwagon. This minivan offers something that the rest don't. The third row of seats can be stored in the boot floor when not in use. And this is very good as it doesn't eat up some storage space like in the other minivans whereby the third row of seats are folded up against the sides. Something else about it is the Waku Waku tailgate which is very unique. It can either open sideways if you just want to throw in something small in the boot or it can even open up the conventional way if you want to put in something heavier or bulkier. The other very uniquely designed minivan is the Nissan Serena. Again, its tailgate is well thought out. You can either just open the rear window if say there isn't enough space to open the entire tailgate or you can as well even open the entire tailgate to store bulkier items. Very convenient, especially in tight parking spots. It also has some intelligent ways in which the second row captain seats can be moved sideways or converted into a bed. In terms of the overall interior designs, these minivans are almost similar. The dash layouts almost resemble each other. Very simple yet functional. They are all spacious, though the ones that come on top in terms of practicality are the Honda Stepwagon and Nissan Serena. Exterior-wise, do let me know in the comment section which one you would prefer. Personally, I would go with the Honda Stepwagon or the Toyota Voxy ZS GR variant. Now, very quickly on to their pros and cons. The Nissan Serena is efficient, practical, very safe, very comfortable, has an improved CVT. It's also affordable to maintain and offers good value for money which I will explain shortly. Its only weaknesses are low ground clearance, a bit of low resale value, and power sliding door issues, which is an issue that affects all these minivans. On to the Mitsubishi Delica D5. This minivan has excellent ground clearance. It has very good four-wheel drive credentials. It's very hardy, not as delicate as the competitors. It's efficient, very reliable, has better driving dynamics compared to the competitors and also offers good value for money, which again I'm explaining shortly. Its only weaknesses are diesel DPF issues, which can be mitigated by deleting the, that diesel particulate filter. Then it also has power sliding door issues and a bit of not so good resale value. On to the Toyota Voxy, it is very spacious, very efficient very reliable, affordable to maintain, and has the best resale value. Its weaknesses are low ground clearance, power sliding door issues, and a bit of hybrid technology issues. Last but not least, the Honda Stepwagon is the most practical. It's very efficient, very reliable, affordable to maintain, and also has good resale value. It only falls short in terms of low ground clearance and the power sliding door issues. So with all that said, which among these four should you go for, be it as a family hauler or for business? Now let me say this, you should no longer ignore the Nissan Serena, especially with these improvements. So if you're on a tight budget, then without further ado, just get the Serena and install a CVT oil cooler. It's the most affordable minivan here, yet it's the safest, most comfortable, it's quite practical and is easy to maintain. The CVT gearbox has also been improved. On the other hand, if you still doubt the Nissan Serena and are willing to cough out some more cash to get any other minivan, I would recommend the Honda Stepwagon. At some point, this used to be among the most affordable minivans in the Kenyan market, but at the moment it's not. 
though it's still incredibly reliable it's the most species and also performs very well but again if for some reason you don't want the step wagon just get the voxy or no they can do almost everything that the step wagon does though the step wagon has a slight edge especially in terms of space packaging and hybrid technology that leaves us with the mitsubishi delica d5 so who is this minivan for i would say it's for those who want to do a bit of off-roading with their families this minivan leads in terms of ground clearance four-wheel drive capabilities and hardness hardiness it also has a diesel engine that is reliable punchy enough and economical as well in fact personally i will get this delica instead of a toyota no or voxy but if i was to choose just one among these four minivans i would go for the honda step wagon 1.5 liter turbo which one would you go for do let me know your thoughts in the comments section i hope this has been helpful thanks a lot for watching as always if you have any inquiries feel free to reach me via whatsapp or email that's it for today's episode stay safe ride and drive safe and see you in the next one but before you go please don't forget to hit that subscribe button